As the holiday season nears its end, we've got literally just a few hours left before 2019 becomes 2020, and we officially say goodbye to the second decade of this century. Anyone else feel old? And so, in celebration of that, we decided it would be worth discussing some of the biggest plug-in car and clean transportation news of the year. So much happened that we can't mention all of the news or all of the cars that launched, but what follows are some of the things that we personally remember, for better or worse. The year started off with a bit of a fizzle when Nissan unveiled its longer range Nissan Leaf E+, originally destined to be revealed at the LA Auto Show at the tail end of 2018. The 62 kilowatt hour Leaf was actually revealed at an invite only event during CES 2018. Priced into Tesla Model 3 and Chevrolet Bolt EV territory, the longer range Leaf variant featured a more capable 160 kilowatt motor and up to 100 kilowatts of quick charging capability when compared to the 40 kilowatt hour entry level Leaf. Its range 226 miles on the EPA test cycle made it the longest range Leaf to date, but it hasn't really sold well all year as customers have opted for longer range competition instead. A little later in January, Ford finally confirmed it was working on an electric pickup truck in the form of the F-150. Later in the year, we saw a staged demonstration of the electric pickup development, and towards the end of this year, Ford committed to producing both a hybrid and an electric F-150 in the coming months. By the time February rolled around, we were hearing some major investment was coming in startup Rivian, which not only got assistance from Ford and a Rivian-engineered Ford vehicle promised in the near future, but also a massive cash injection from Amazon. This year, Amazon has continued that investment in Rivian, resulting in yesterday's news of a $1.3 billion funding boost to help it bring electric delivery trucks to market for Amazon by the end of 2020. At the very end of February, Tesla finally made the Tesla Model 3 standard range available. Although throughout the year, that car and its promised $35,000 starting price tag quickly made way for the Tesla Model 3 standard range plus. Tesla did honor the orders for the original Model 3 standard range customers, but it quickly made the car more expensive, or rather the longer range standard range plus the de facto entry level model for new Tesla customers. That move helped Tesla slim down its production line processes and helped it break some serious records this year in terms of delivery and production. While we don't know full 2019 delivery figures for Tesla yet, I can say that Tesla is ending the year with Model 3 outselling both its rivals in the electric car marketplace as well as internal combustion engine luxury car rivals. Great job, Tesla. 2019 was a year in which lots of automakers made larger commitments to going fully electric. Audi and Volkswagen made full electric vehicle pushes, and GM, Ford and others upped their commitments, promising that they eventually would also go electric. The GM caught some slack in the year, however, for cancelling its Volt range-extended plug-in hybrid, as well as admitting that its new 2021 Suburban and Tahoe would help pay for making more EVs. It also released an updated 2020 Bolt EV, which pushed its range over 250 miles per charge. GM wasn't alone in strange approaches to EVs through this year either. We saw some howlers from other automakers too, including the CEO of Honda, who just recently said towards the end of the year that, quote, there will be no dramatic increase in EV demand. Despite Honda pushing towards electric vehicles and away from fuel cell vehicles in a very obvious way this year. That said, it seems that both Toyota and Honda, while more welcoming towards electric cars than they were this time last year, are still holding out on hydrogen. Given 2020 is the year of the Tokyo Olympics, it's going to be interesting to see what this year, and Japan's very heavy emphasis on hydrogen fuel sec technology, will do for this moving forwards. 2019 saw the amount of US federal tax credits available to GM and Tesla buyers drop throughout the year. While this didn't seem to affect Tesla all that much, falling tax credits for GM buyers saw the automaker push some crazy deals towards the end of this year in an attempt to get more people to buy. By the middle of the year, 
we'd started to see some really interesting things happen in Europe as well. Piaggio Citroën, the owner of the Opel and Vauxhall brands now, really pushed the boat out with a new electric vehicle platform that would eventually be sold as the eCorsa and E208. Offering a, what amounts to an electric hot hatch, these two vehicles are already grabbing a lot of interest and attention, even though they're not due to hit dealer lots en masse until next year. The original European electric hot hatch, the Renault Zoe, also got a very major and welcome boost this year, getting a larger capacity battery pack, 50 kilowatt hours, and finally DC quick charging. 2019 was also the year in which Renault decided to ditch its battery rental model for good, and from now on, all new Renaults are now being sold with batteries included. In a year marked by a push away from short range electric cars, BMW surprised everyone by revealing its electric Mini Cooper SE would come with a range of just over 110 miles per charge. While that was poo pooed by many of you here, its starting price, less than 30,000 US dollars before incentives, could make it a compelling fun city drive for some customers. Although Volkswagen and its just revealed ID3, due to go into production in Europe and release next year, is probably going to get most of the market. As we headed towards the end of the year, we saw a couple of quirky electric cars hit the headlines. One, Aptera, rose from the grave after an eight year slumber, while the other, Oregon based Archimoto, started official series production. Taking a break from cars this year was also pretty good for electric motorcycles. You saw the Zero SRF launch and redefine what an electric motorcycle could and should be, and I got a super quick spin. We also saw the Harley Davidson Livewire launch, and I got my hands on an Energica SASA9, still one of my favourite moments of this year. The year was also a year in which we started to see electric airplanes really take off. Uh, if you'll excuse the pun. Several vertical takeoff and landing aircraft made their maiden test flights, as did the all electric float plane that is destined for use with Harbour Air in Vancouver, Canada. Back to vehicles, we can't end the year without discussing the Cybertruck. Revealed with gasps of both joy and horror, Cybertruck ends 2019, having been featured in a rap music video. Uh, gang Gang, in case you're interested. No, I'm not going to include it here because copyright, as well as creating a whole slew of mini-me wannabe conversions. That was uh, the Cybertruck, not the copyright. Cybertruck, of course, was just one of the many amazing things that Tesla did this year. Not only did the car company that leads the EV industry reveal Model Y, but it also set new delivery and production records, expanded production into China with the launch of Gigafactory 3, and confirmed even more Gigafactories are on the way in the US and Europe. And that's before you even discuss the continued rollout of improvements to Tesla's in-vehicle software, its drive towards full self-driving, and its brand new solar roof products. The trucking world was also pretty busy during 2019, with Nikola World showcasing both electric and hydrogen fuel cell trucks, Daimler's Freightliner delivering its first electric big rigs, and more and more fleets around the world going electric. By the end of 2019, well, it's worth mentioning the amazing Porsche Taycan, which held its official US press drive event at the end of the year. Despite abysmal range ratings, this high-end luxury sports sedan will likely find itself a place among Porsche fans. Although it won't steal any Tesla custom. And that's okay because the Porsche, like it or not, appeals to a very different buyer to the Model S or the Roadster. As to my review of the same, yeah, there's one coming. Sadly, there's only two of us at the office full time and we can only do so much without a full time video editor. We need one, but sadly budget constraints aren't possible to make that happen yet. The last memorable launch of 2019 for me, the launch of the Ford Mustang Mark E. While the event itself, held behind the Hawthorne Design Center where Tesla holds its events, was way over the top for me, the Ford Mustang Mark E has proven popular if divisive. The Ford has just announced it's sold out of its special first edition variants, with most people opting for the longer range battery pack. While I've not driven it, and I'm not really a fan of the layout of that center console, I can say riding in it was a total blast, and I cannot wait to get behind the wheel myself. With all of the car stuff over, how about us here as a channel? Well, 
This is the year in which we welcomed a new freelancer onto the team in form of Brandon Yang, uh, who we like to call Brandon too, because we have another camera guy called Brandon. He came with us to CES 2019 and also accompanied me to India to see how Mahindra used to make its now discontinued electric E20 city car. We also made a team trip to Fully Charged Live UK so we could take part in the second ever Fully Charged Live event. It was a fantastic experience for everyone. And yes, yeah, we do have some more videos to share with you that haven't yet been produced. But yet again, we really do now need a full time video editor willing to work on air and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. There were also some epic trips that we made this year, too. I drove all the way to Los Angeles and back in my Bolt EV to receive this award from Plug in America. I'm totally honored to receive that. Thank you. And my wife, Kate, we call her and Mary Kate, because there are two Kates here, has just completed an epic, unbelievably crazy trek from Portland, Oregon to Missouri with our teenage daughter in her new to her 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV, which she got after trading in our Nissan Leaf. So that's it. That's 2019 in a nutshell for us. I'm going back to the craziness that is now packing for CES. There are so many boxes. If you like what you do, you'll find links in the show notes below. I'll be back soon with more content. But until then, Happy New Year and see you in 2020.